thank you for joining us at the 18th annual Seesaw 21 Cybersecurity Games and Conference. My name is Steph Daly. I oversee competition development. So I have my hands in most aspects of this event, maybe for better or for worse. And so if you're involved in Seesaw, we've probably chatted online or at the very least you've received many emails from me. I'm really happy to be here today in what is the culmination of many months and hours of work for our student leads and our faculty advisors, and most recently hours of work from our student finalists and preparing for, for this week. And I'm excited for you to join in our events over the next few days in support of our 123 finalist teams. So we are here at the, at the welcome address, um, although I should say that CESA started earlier today um, at 3 a.m. Eastern time, the Europe Applied Research Competition presentations happened and the policy competition semifinal round is, is just wrapping up right now. And this event here, the welcome address will transition directly into the keynote. So you can just stay in your, in your virtual seat here in this uh, Zoom webinar for the keynote as well. And so at this point, I'd like to hand the virtual mic over to Professor Ramesh Kari who serves as the faculty director of the Global Seesaw Games and is co-director of the NYU Center for Cybersecurity located at NYU Tandon School of Engineering in New York City. So Ramesh, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Steph. And thank you all. Welcome to you all. Uh, this is uh, uh, our second year as a virtual event. I think uh, the important thing to focus on uh, and celebrate this year is uh, persistence. Certainly, not uh, on, online is not as much fun, and uh, certainly it's nearly not as engaging uh, as an in-person event. And we do miss the in-person events. Uh, but students, all of you who are at the heart of this event, continue to tell us that uh, you are appreciative of the effort to work on research and the hands-on learning, and that this is a very valuable experience to you. Uh, student feedback from you all continues to be that you enjoy being involved beyond the activities that you have in your classroom, and that uh, you like working on real-world problems. And uh, as you all know, competitions are fun. So quick uh, capture of the number by the numbers, CESAW 2021. And what I said uh, on uh, just before is confirmed by some of the things that you see on the slide. It benefits from being organized uh, regionally across five academic centers across the world. Uh, we ran seven unique cybersecurity competitions this year. Plus, uh, for those of you, uh, if you just go and look in the agenda, we have the annual Cyber Journalism Award. Uh, and as Steph mentioned, uh, we have about 120 odd teams at the finals, representing 97 universities from 22 countries. This is just the finals and not the initial registrations and initial uh, events. The Hack3 camp competition and the CTF competition combined have had 3,000 teams register during the qualification rounds. Uh, and one benefit of a virtual event is that Unlike in the past, we could come together on a single platform and we honor, I am honored to have all of my colleagues, uh, the faculty directors from our global regions join us in this event. So uh, welcome uh, again. Uh, first, uh, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Sandeep Shukla. He co-founded Seesaw India at IIT Kanpur. He's a professor of uh, computer science and engineering at NYU, sorry, at uh, IIT Kanpur. And prior to that, he was a professor at Virginia Tech. Sandi. Hello, everybody. Uh, and uh, good evening or good uh, uh, morning, good afternoon, uh, whatever the case may be, depending on uh, where you are. So uh, I would just briefly talk about Seesaw India. So we started in 2016, just that that's one year after the Seesaw in this form was founded. And normally uh, in India at that time in 2016, cybersecurity was not 
uh, that uh, much, uh, you know, getting that much attention. But now in recent times, the government and everybody has put up a lot of effort to secure critical infrastructures and uh, the financial infrastructure, etc. So we are seeing a lot more people coming into uh, cybersecurity research, cybersecurity activities and so on. And so we see that reflected in the competition as well. So uh, normally we do the multiple different uh, uh, events, uh, not all the events that happens everywhere else uh, we organize, but we normally do the applied research uh, competition. We do the embedded security challenge and the capture the flag. And it turns out that um, this year, uh, because of the pandemic and all, uh, you know, other issues, we are not running the applied research. Uh, and then we have been uh, running the uh, embedded security challenge, both the uh, practical track and the research track, and also the, uh, of course, the CTF. And uh, we have uh, in the finals, we have 20 teams and uh, 15 universities represented, uh, and then 66 individuals. Uh, and that is 46 for the CTF and 20 for the ESC. And uh, many more uh, students are also involved in the other competitions that, that is happening at NYU and not here, that is logic locking and hack 3D competitions, uh, but uh, we are not uh, organizing them here. And the agenda now is that uh, on Friday afternoon, we are going to have the embedded security challenge presentations. I believe there are five teams and two are in the research track and, and the three are in the practical uh, track. And then uh, the capture the flag uh, will be starting on Saturday morning and end, uh, it will end on Saturday, uh, Sunday night. So that's uh, 36 hours. And uh, the, uh, I just want to say that uh, uh, we are very happy to see that there is a lot more diversity now than when we started. So I see that uh, in the, in the uh, CTF, we are seeing a lot of uh, institutes around India, which was uh, not uh, doing this kind of cybersecurity related events or participating in this kind of events earlier. So that's very good because the whole point of this is to popularize cybersecurity and uh, create awareness and interest. So that I think is happening, which is a very good uh, sign. So uh, of course we are missing the uh, fun and the uh, events that we used to organize physically on, on campus here. And we hope that we'll go back to that maybe next year, depending on the situation with respect to the pandemic. But uh, now, for now, this is what we are uh, doing online. And uh, I, I wish everybody uh, luck uh, for among the Indian, for the Indian participants, as well as uh, other participants around the world. And uh, uh, enjoy and hope you can uh, uh, take some, some lessons out of this uh, and towards your career in cybersecurity. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sandeep. Uh, next, it is uh, Professor Mihalis Maniatakos. He is uh, an associate professor of computer engineering at uh, NYU Abu Dhabi, and uh, he leads the Cybersecurity Awareness Week uh, events at NYU Abu Dhabi and in the MENA region in general. Mihalis? Thank you, Ramesh. Um, so I'm speaking uh, to everyone now as a uh, director of MENA region. I was the, an ESC faculty lead before, and before that I was a participant. I actually participated in 2011 in ESC, and we won that time. So here I am today, getting promoted every few years. So hopefully in a few years I'll take a message position as the super boss, but maybe I don't want that. That's, it's too much work. Only Rames can do that with Steph. Uh, hi everyone, um, Michalis Magnetakos. Um, I've been uh, working from the MENA region. I'm based in Abu Dhabi and NYU Abu Dhabi. As you know, uh, all of you, CISO is a student-led competition. So we're mostly here taking credit, but all the work goes to the students. And I, I really like to thank the students at NYU Abu Dhabi who helped 
organize the MENA part. Uh, Sumesh, for again doing applied research. Thank you, Sumesh. I mean, every year you say you go, but I keep you forcefully, uh, but ho hopefully you graduate next year. That's, tr so. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Likita with the Embedded Security Challenge helping us for the first time. Uh, we have three teams there participating and Homer with Capture the Flag. So a big thank you to the students who are leading these, uh, the competitions. Uh, in terms of participation in the MENA region, we're very happy to have six countries currently represented in, in the uh, competitions. Um, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Israel, Algeria, Tunisia, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia for a total of 13 teams and 13 universities represented. I will have a total of 20, 20 student finalists in the various competitions that we uh, uh, have at MENA. Actually, we have the Applied Research Competition, CTF, and the Embedded Security Challenge. And um, I, I wanted to say that we're very, very happy to have. CISO was one of the first cybersecurity events in the region. Uh, others have started, but uh, CISO brought uh, awareness about cybersecurity back in 2015. That it wasn't that cool as it is today. So a big thank you to Ramesh and Nasir. That was back then uh, the lead. So that's it for me. Thank you, Mihalis. Uh, now let me introduce Professor Edgar uh, Ortiz uh, uh, Loyola from Ibero, Ibero Americana University in Mexico City. He's uh, the advisor and lead uh, of the Seesaw Mexico, joined with uh, his colleague. Edgar, could you take over? Yes, thank you very much, Ramesh. Uh, well, hello, everyone. I'm very excited and happy to be here today. I want to thank the NYU Center for Cybersecurity for the opportunity given to us, to the Universidad Iberoamericana, to be for the, first, for the fourth time since 2018, the organizer of the CISO Mexico region competition. Thank you very much. We are partic participating in two categories, Capture the Flag uh, and the Cybersecurity Challenge for high schools in Mexico for the first time. This new event replaces the red team competition for the Mexico region. Uh, the idea is that the student teams will be provided with an initial piece of digital evidence and then tasked with using forensic analysis to discover additional evidence while documenting their process. Uh, our main aim uh, to participate in this, in, this, in this competition is to more promote the awareness of the cybersecurity in Mexico. We think that uh, something that we really need in Mexico is to, to create uh, a, a a, a more deep awareness and uh, a, a better understanding on all these things of cybersecurity and the risk of not having a security in the information systems. So, well, I would like to wish all the success and fun to all the participants and thank you very much again. Thank you, Edgar. And uh, Steph, you want to take over, please? Yeah, so um, David Helley, who is um, an associate professor of electrical and computer engineering and head of uh, computer engineering, engineering support uh, for system security at Grenoble INP SESAR was not able to join us, but he did put together a video. And so I am going to play that for us now. Let's. Hello everyone. My name is David Deli. I am associate professor at Grenoble INP SESAR, and I am the general chair for the European final of CISO 21. We are very happy here at Grenoble INP SESAR to partner with NYU to organize this European final. So this year you will be 104 finalists in, in for the European final coming from 10 European countries and representing 45 universities. The finalists will be judged by 10 industrial experts coming from uh, different European companies. And it is worth to note that uh, we have been organizing the European final since uh, 2017. It is the fifth edition. Before that, we participated to, to CISO in NYU as competitor. It's a long story now. So we are hosting three different uh, competitions for this 21 edition, the Applied Research Competition, the Capture the Flag Competition, and the Embedded Security Challenge. We need to thank everyone in NYU who have been involved in uh, defining the challenges and managing all the administrative stuff around the organization of CISO. A big thanks to Steph for the great support she gave us. And also I need to, to thank the students here in Grenoble NP who have been participating in the organization and uh, who will be involved during the forthcoming days 
to organize the competitions. So a special thank to Arthur Baudet, Arthur De Swear, and Amir Halipour for the applied research competitions, supervised by Professor Stephanie Cholet. Uh, thank you, Alexandre Fauconois and Alexandre Bouchon, both students at, at Grenoble INP and in charge of the uh, European edition of the Capture the Flag. And uh, thank you, Ihia Balcher and Zara Kazemi, PhD student at the LCES lab, and advice for Professor Vincent Baroum, who are managing the European final for the ESC. And also uh, a big thank to Gabriel Blanchard and Anne Lordure, who have done a huge work in order to be able, uh, within Grenoble NP, to organize this event. Even if it is remotely this year, still it's tough. So thank you very much. A few words about the program. So already this morning, we have hosted the applied research competition with 10 great presentations. We will have on Fridays the embedded security competition all the day. And then Friday evening, we'll start the capture the flag, which will be 36 hour long. On Friday afternoon at 5.30, uh, 30, 30, we will organize uh, the award ceremony for the applied research and the embedded security competition. So please join us. The Zoom link is available online. And uh, it will be a great opportunity to celebrate the winner of uh, this edition. And once again, thank you very much to NYU. Thank you very much to everyone who have been involved in the organization of this great event. And I wish you all the best for these uh, four days of competition and great uh, talks, research talk, and so on. So yes, please enjoy leverage. And now I'm going to spend just a couple minutes talking about what happens for the US Canada region, which we typically say is hosted by NYU Tannen School of Engineering. Um, but the truth is there's a lot of different groups within NYU and outside of NYU who are helping uh, to make our events possible. So the policy competition is organized by the NYU Center for Global Affairs and is advised by Dr. Peno Yanako Dorgos. It's led by Priya Singh, Sandra Khalil, Rebecca Mater, and Richard Yu. And Amanda Toby led the research efforts this year. Um, in, in a first ever, this competition has managed to organize three rounds. As I mentioned, semifinals is, is just wrapping up probably right now. And that's through the support of many faculty members from the Center for Global Affairs, as well as industry partners. Capture the Flag is a major project for the OSIRIS Lab, which is part of um, NYU Center for Cybersecurity. The leads this year are Richard and Dei Shaw. Rachel Tao leads infrastructure support with help from Andre Hu and a recent alum, alum John Conniff, has also lent massive support as well, despite him being graduated, which is, which is a trend with the lab. Lots of alumni support. Professor Brendan, Brendan Dolan Gavitt is the lab's faculty advisor, and the lab is, is literally in the midst right now of, of pulling all their resources to make for a really great CTF competition as um, everyone has mentioned, starts on Friday and runs through Sunday. We've had a ton of support from industry as well, who have written lots of good uh, challenges, and they'll be at the industry fair, so you should stop by and say hello to them. Uh, next up is the Embedded Security Challenge, which is organized globally by Professor Nicarius Zutsus with PhD students Chaz Goer, Demetrius Morris, and Lars Folkerts from the University of Delaware. The hardware this year, um, which was a popular chip whisperer nano board was sponsored by Siemens Technology. Um, and it essentially allows all of our finalist teams to get a board and to hack it over the course of October as challenges are released from, from the leads. Hack3D is overseen by Professor Nikhil Gupta in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Dr. Hammond Pearson support and PhD student Gary Mack um, leads the competition. And this competition had a summer challenge as well as a fall challenge. And the top teams are in the midst of uh, solving the final challenge right now. And those presentations will happen on Friday. And they've had massive engagement from students around the world, something like 1,300 teams registered. So that's great news for additive manufacturing security. Next, Applied Research Competition is advised by Professor Danny Wong and is co-chaired by PhD students uh, Rasika Bolero, Aditya Sarish, Yagundali, Govin 
Mittal and Juan Esteban Villegas. Um, and this competition looks at the best security research. Um, and this is actually for all the regions. It looks at the best security research published um, in, the, in the past year in looking for research that has a, a strong potential for impact in application. And so it, it's important in sort of bridging the gap between theoretical research and research that's useful in industry. Logic locking is uh, logic locking conquest is coordinated by Professor Ben Tan now at the University of Calgary and is led by PhD students Chitendra Bandari and Abdul Falakudu Musa. This competition examines uh, state of the art techniques for protecting intellectual property of integrated circuits from security threats. And uh, finally, I wanted to also mention the IC layout security uh, competition, which is new and up and coming. It's being developed under Dr. Johan uh, Kneshtel at NYU Abu Dhabi um, with support from Jitendra Bandari and Jayant Gopanath here at NYU Tandon. And you can learn more about that by attending Johan's talk um, at 1.15 today. So now I will pass it back to uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, I want to thank all our sponsors. Every year, these are the uh, the sponsors are pivotal for the success of the programs. Uh, when we were doing these things in person, they would support travel and uh, other uh, activities. Uh, so I want to thank DTCC and Siemens, IC Consult, the National Science Foundation, CMU Information Networking Institute, Trail of Bits. Amazon Web Services, uh, Security Scorecard, and Facebook. And uh, representatives from these companies will be at the career fair today, tomorrow, and Friday. So please be sure to drop by, chat with them, and learn about the potential job opportunities. We also have many judges uh, from these companies who are lending their expertise in judging the various challenges. So thank you to them. And please say thank you to them when you meet with them so much so so much to all the judges. Additionally, we have had an incredible support uh, this year for the capture the flag. And so thank you to this list of companies that lent their engineering time in writing the challenges. Uh, again, uh, I encourage you all to visit these companies at the virtual industry fair over the next couple of days. I'm really pleased on our time. I was very worried, but we're, we're doing great here. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take one more minute just to give a overview of the agenda for the next uh, couple of days. The agenda can be found on the Seesaw website. It's also linked via the platform. Um, if you can find the schedule sign in the virtual lobby, um, you can find the agenda there. And, and there's a calendar functionality too on the platform that gives you a list of all the events happening, which is pretty cool. So we've talked about the industry fair. Please um, make a point to stop by the various booths um, over the course of the next few days. We're transitioning right now into the keynote and following that will be uh, Dr. Kneshtul's talk on IC layout security at 115. Following that, we have an excellent panel a panel that's co-sponsored with NYU Wireless on security challenges in 5G wireless and beyond. At 3.30, Dr. Uh, Hammond Pierce, who I've mentioned, is going to be talking about his research with uh, GitHub Copilot. So that'll be very cool. And then the talks culminate today at 5 p.m. with the Cyber Journalism Award, uh, which honors Dina Temple Raston, who um, was formerly at NPR and had reported um, on the solar winds hack. So that'll be excellent as well. And we have some competition meetups with leads at 6 p.m. Tomorrow is a, is a relatively quiet day on the platform. Um, everyone is, is welcome to join, but this day, um, it, it's Veterans Day in the United States. It's Remembrance Day in Europe and other parts of the world. Um, and so we wanted to be able to make sure that um, students and or employers who have the holiday and are, are honoring those uh, these holidays have space for that. So tomorrow I would encourage all of our if you have time, all of our, our finalists to, to come onto the platform, get comfortable with it. You can find me on the platform. I'm happy to give you a little virtual tour, uh, but this is really just a day set aside for, for dry runs and of course the industry fair. And then on Friday, we have all sorts of competitions happening on Friday. It's going to be very exciting, plus a series of award ceremonies. And then CTF kicks off Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and it culminates 
Sunday morning in the U.S. and Sunday evening in India, and we'll have an award ceremony uh, directly following that on the platform. So that should be very fun. And so now I will, um, I'll hand it back over to you, Ramesh, for uh, transitioning into our keynote.